All right, everybody, we're back with a brand new show. Excited to go over brand new research on vitamin D absorption. And believe it or not, for the first time, we've got really great data that shows you how your weight affects your vitamin D absorption. And the reason why I believe that this is important is because there's a lot of people who write in on the Cabral concept and they say, you know, I'm taking 4,000 IUs. I'm taking 5,000 IUs, uh, which is the equivalent 100 to 125 micrograms for the new readouts on vitamin D. So if you wanna know the new readouts on vitamin D, just as an aside, what used to be 25 IUs is now, or what used to be 1,000 IUs is now 25 micrograms. So 4,000 IUs is now 100 micrograms. So just you're able to do the conversion if you're using vitamin D. Hopefully that's helpful. But the big thing is this. A lot of people aren't necessarily absorbing vitamin D. And before, we always thought it was cofactors. They're not getting their vitamin K. They're not getting their calcium. They're not getting their magnesium. They're not getting other factors to help vitamin D actually get where it needs to be inside of the tissue, inside of the body, right? So when we look at this, we say, yes, those factors still exist. That's why we always recommend taking your vitamin D, but using a daily activated multivitamin or daily nutritional support powder. And the reason we say that is because that contains then your calcium, your magnesium, your vitamin K, your zinc, and other cofactors that allow vitamin D to be synthesized it typically through the liver, and then absorbed in your body where it needs to be, whether it's bone, tissue, et cetera. All right, so that's super important. Those cofactors still matter. I have a whole podcast on those. If you've never heard about the cofactors for vitamin D before, I'll link that up at stephencabral.com slash 2910. But what I wanna go over is brand new research because maybe you're taking vitamin D, maybe you're taking the cofactors, and you still can't get your level to be between 50 and 80 on blood work, which is your 25 hydroxy vitamin D. If you wanna run your uh, vitamin D, we actually are shipping 100 free vitamin D labs per month. I will link it up today at stephencabral.com slash 2910. If the link is live, it's still available. You can check it out. You just pay shipping for that lab. That's literally it. We do that because we want to introduce people to functional medicine. A lot of people don't even know that all these labs exist. So this is our first time lab users. We want to be able to share with you. Not only do these labs exist, that you can do them right at home. It's not shared with doctors or insurance companies. It's all private. Uh, and what matters is you get actual data that you can take action on. Okay. So I'll link that up as well. But now let's get to the research. And I actually first read this through Thorne. So I like to give always a shout out where it's, uh, where it's due. And then I went directly to the research. So I'm going to link up the research as well at the same URL that I've stated. And it's actually in nutrients, which is very fascinating. So love being able to go direct to the research. This just came out about 90 days ago. Let me read it to you. Visceral fat traps vitamin D. Although the correlation between obesity and low vitamin D levels is established in the scientific literature, the relationship between visceral adipose tissue and vitamin D has not been fully elucidated. Some studies suggest adipose tissue can sequester vitamin D, decreasing serum vitamin D. I'm going to read just a little bit more and then I'm going to translate all the medical speak. This relationship was explored in a study of 58 adults with low serum vitamin D, levels less than 30, milligram, 30 milligrams per milliliter in overweight or obesity as measured by a BMI of greater than 25. Now, a BMI greater than 25 isn't really that like much. It's a person that's 5'8", and they weigh more than like 165 pounds. You now have a BMI over uh, 25. So it's like, it's not that big, and, and that's actually not obesity. O obesity is um, a greater than a 2930 for a BMI. So meanwhile, what I'm saying is this vitamin D issue could affect people that are just a little overweight as well. That's why I find this to be very fascinating. Now, again, two thirds of the American population um, are overweight and one third is obese. So this is absolutely affecting people. Okay. Participants were tested for serum vitamin D and calcium at baseline and after supplementation of 50,000 IU per month for six months. At baseline and at six months, ultrasound was used to measure subcutaneous adipose tissue thickness, visceral adipose tissue, uh, preperitoneal adipose tissue, apologies for there, and pre 
renal adipose tissue. Okay, I'm going to translate all that in a moment as well. Additional measures at baseline in six months included waist circumference, waist hip ratio, waist to height ratio, and body adipose tissue, uh, tissue uh, index. The study participants had vitamin D insufficiently at baseline. After six months of vitamin D supplementation, individuals with obesity experienced an increase in serum vitamin D and about half the increase of normal weight individuals. For all participants, waist circumference, hip circumference, and visceral adipose tissue were significantly correlated with vitamin D status after six months. In females, waist hip ratio was measured most strongly correlated with serum vitamin D, while waist circumference was the most significantly correlated measure in men. All right, let's translate what that means. So what they looked at was a specific type of fat. They looked at visceral fat. That is different than subcutaneous. Subcutaneous is what I call the softer fat. That's the fat that if you kind of lean over a little bit, you might get a little roll on the stomach. You can pinch it, right? Not, not an issue. Where visceral fat is fat that isn't necessarily between the muscle and skin that's subcutaneous. But visceral fat is fat that's woven in with the muscle and or organs and usually around the abdominal uh, section, so around your stomach. It's much more prevalent in men than it is women, which is why I believed they found that waist circumference in men was the biggest correlator to low vitamin D level absorption, where in women, it was more waist-based, waist to hip. A reason why that's important is because it shows a where, where fat is placed in the body. So if fat is more on the hips, it's more subcutaneous. Where fat is more in the waist, it's definitely more visceral in many cases, not all. All right, so what does this also mean? Well, if we just do some math here, if we look at 50,000 IUs and we take that over the course of 30 days, we are going to get, let's see, about 1,666 IUs of vitamin D. That's not that much in the first place. Most adults need about 4,000 IUs or about 35 IUs per pound of body weight. How we typically do this is we do about 4,000 IUs a day, and they typically get a little bit through food, and they get a little bit through their, let's say, daily activated multivitamin or daily nutritional support. It works great for most adults to be able to get within that 50 to 80 on their blood work. Now, for some, they need a little bit more. And for others, if they're around 79, 80, 90, okay, they might be able to drop their vitamin D by 1,000 or 2,000 IUs. But most adults we found need about 2,000 to 4,000 IUs of vitamin D supplementation per day if they're not maintaining the tan year round. What they found though is that those with a higher BMI, especially with obesity, were only about half of those at a normal weight. Meaning like they took the same vitamin D, but they were not able to raise their serum levels, their blood level of vitamin D, where a normal weight, and when I say normal, I'm using that in air quotes, because we can decide on what's normal and what's not normal for weight. That's not you know the realm that I'm into. I'm simply going by BMI. There are individuals between 19.5 or so and 24.9, that would be considered normal, air quotes, and then 25 to 29 ish, right in that area, is overweight, and then above a 29 is going to be more in the obesity-based category. Well, what they found now is the higher your BMI, the less likely you are to absorb vitamin D. And what seems to be the case is that the vitamin D itself is getting trapped in the visceral adipose tissue. And adipose just means body fat. So when they talked about renal, they're talking about the kidneys. Were they, were they talking about visceral body fat? We're talking about the fat uh, mixed in with the organs or muscle tissue. When they talk about subcutaneous, we're talking about between the muscle and the skin, there's a layer of fat, that's the subcutaneous. But what they're, they used was actually ultrasound, and they're able to look at the amount of visceral fat or subcutaneous, both, and then they're able to see, based with BMI, where there is a drop off in absorption. And what they found, as they said, is that the higher the BMI, the more vitamin D gets trapped. So now, does the question be, do we just continue to increase the dosage of vitamin D? 
That might be one way to look at it. The problem is, no matter what, you're going to continue to trap more vitamin D in the tissue. My fear would be, if we do that, we might get greater calcification in the arteries and potentially in the tissues and joints themselves. That would not be my idea of a good plan. What I would look at is, how do we decrease the visceral adipose tissue? How do we decrease overall weight and body fat as long as the patient or the client is amenable to that? And then we get the liver and the body functioning better so we can use a normal dosage, 2,000 to 4,000 IUs a day of vitamin D with its cofactors and get the proper absorption. So that is a much more natural and integrative health-based approach in order to improve vitamin D. If you want to get more information on vitamin D or being able to burn visceral body fat or body fat in general, uh, we'll link up a few shows and those will be at stephencabral.com slash 2910. And if you want all of our shows on weight loss in that weight loss based category, head to stephencabral.com slash podcasts and just scroll through the images at the top. You'll find all of our ones on weight loss, the different systems that we've been using now for about 25 years to help people burn body fat, keep the body fat off, and just achieve their body weight, their ideal body weight. Not a friend's, not a family member's, but what feels right for them. Hopefully today's show was helpful. And again, all those links will be at stephencabral.com slash 2910. Take care, everybody. I'll talk with you tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.